Speaking of the mainstream media, let's talk about hypocrites over at CNN. Oh, my friends over at CNN constantly uh, saying ridiculous things. <laughs> You're cracking me up. Thanks. You know what's so funny? I had a dream last night that I took over for Chris Cuomo. That originally it was you taking over and then they said the the powers that be were like, they don't want a white male, so your wife's doing it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I let me just say this. No, I would never work at CNN. I will never work at a mainstream media organization. Well, me right. neither. But mo you know, they no. wouldn't have me when I tried. So that's easy. But for they didn't me want to a white now. male like me. Well, apparently they love Don Lemon, and I guess uh, you know Chris Cuomo is out. We've got all sorts of scandals and problems plaguing CNN. Well, Don Lemon yesterday decided that you know what, his network is so good is the is the arbiter of morality in America that it's time it's time for the White House to put an end to put an end to Fox News being in the White House press corps that CNN should be there, but Fox News shouldn't be able to ask tough questions of Jen Psaki in the White House press briefing room. Listen to Don Lemon's take on this. We know all of this. Why, why does Jen Psaki even continue to call on Fox in the briefing room? I mean, they're very, they've been very courteous and I should say, you know, kind, because if your network is promoting BS and lies about what is actually happening in the country and helping to inspire and incite an insurrection, why why should they even be able to take part in a legitimate press briefing in legitimate journalism yeah it's so tough because there are reporters still at fox very few and very few getting um airtime and the last real good one just left the building same question right even though she makes a very good point even though they have vaccine rules and um mask rules and mandates at their own places of business but why the question about why why did they even allow Fox to but pretend in the briefing room that they're a real news organization. Well, I think we'd that. say historically, you got to keep as broad an opening of the press corps as possible, let in as many voices as possible, you know, even let in cranks. And there's been a lot of cranks in the briefing room in the past, not Fox, but just randos that are able to come to the briefing. I think historically that's been the approach. Let as many people in as you can possibly fit in the room. But to, today at the briefing, what did Fox ask about? The Christmas tree being set ablaze. <laughs> which was awful last week, and I was really disturbed to see it. But no one thinks that's the top 10 story in America today, except with Fox News. Uh, so, And yet you guys are still talking about do, the insurrection. recognize it for what it is. And you've been documenting it, Don. We've been trying to document yeah, it. Uh, no, no, they spent four years talking about Russia. They spent four years talking about misinformation and yet and, and, and lying to the American people. So CNN, CNN is the most trusted name in news, right? Look, maybe yeah. we should have a broader discussion, I think, about Who's even allowed into that White House press briefing room anyway? People that have access, people that pay for access, big media companies that have billionaires running them, right? Why? Maybe we should start acting, a a having independent journalists go into the White well, House press briefing room. You know, if you're a real journalist, asking. you should want more journalists in the building. You should right. welcome any and all access, right? And so CNN is shooting itself in the foot by pretending that some people should be censored because then they will have to apply for for the, by those same, they'll have to play by the same rules, right? So as soon as they say something that the White House doesn't like, then they will lose their credentials that by happened. the same, yes. That happened, Glenn Greenwald points out, CNN threw a gigantic hissy fit when the Trump White House revoked the press credentials of Jim Acosta a few, for a few days on the grounds that he is a liar. <laughs> Remember, President Trump called him out and said, you're, you know, that's fake news. They acted as if he were getting the Assange treatment. Now Don Lemon is explicitly advocating that Fox be banned completely from White House briefings. Well, you know, most businesses discuss ways to crush their competition. They're just doing it on live television. Right. Right. I and mean, it's like, it's bad business, but it's how it's done. At least we get to see that that's what they want. They want their competition well, to be not let the into thing, the room. And the thing is, also, if, if they do get out of line, Biden just has a meeting with them and tells them we can't do this anymore. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what he and that. Yeah. David's talking about a meeting that President Biden had about two weeks ago with the media, basically saying, hey, the coverage of me has been pretty bad. So uh, let's tone knock it down it a little bit. Knock it off. Knock it off. But even, you, you know, Don Lemon, me look good. maybe Don Lemon forgot uh, about his some of his tweets back in 2018. CNN sues President Trump and top White House aides for barring Jim Acosta, Don Lemon tweeted. Oh, really? So I guess, well, okay. I guess if, it, if it's good for you, though, right, it's, it's okay, but not for, for, for Fox. 
CNN Trump lawsuit hearing judge orders White House to return Jim Acosta's press pass. CNN. Hashtag journalism. I mean, just last week, Don Lemon was accused of trading text messages with Jesse Smollett. Right. And so he was inappropriately (laughs) involved in a story and he's going to lecture us about journalistic ethics. Yeah. He's going to tell us again, they're the arbiters. They're the arbiters of what's true in America. And how can Jen Psaki continue to call on a Fox News reporter? Um, you know, if they're going to continue to spread lies about what's happening in the country. And you are allowed to ask questions that other people think are silly, such as about the Christmas tree. Right. Fine. You want to ask about it? Ask about it. But let's not pretend because Peter Ducey does otherwise ask serious questions. Yeah. I mean, he's, you know, he's the reason, not an idiot. No, he's not an idiot. And you know, he knows he knows he's stirring the pot. I mean, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's stirring the pot there sometimes. Um, you know, he's famously was uh, was kind of burst onto the scene back when I, you know, before I, even my my day when he asked uh, some tough questions of John McCain mm-hmm. back in the day. Um, so, you know, he's not afraid to ask some tough questions. But, you, I mean, again, I just kind of come back to the 30,000 foot level. That room holds like 60 people. It's a small room, the White House press briefing room. It's a very small room. And they've re- retrofitted it and expanded it over the years, but it's still a very small room. And the people that are in that room are big media corporation paid for paid access to get there. You know, uh, Associated Press, MSNBC, Reuters. CNN, Reuters, the BBC. Like these are all big billionaire media corporations that get to sit in that room and disseminate information. Yeah, wouldn't it so be great if we had? Wouldn't it be great Jimmy if we had Dore? Any, any, Jimmy where's Dore? Glenn Greenwald? Yeah, why doesn't Jim, you know, Glenn Greenwald be invited? Why don't we get invited to the, the White House press briefing room to ask questions? Um, you know, that would be maybe that's a better move. Maybe, they could do it. They could bring in, you know, the, it, I think they just they wouldn't like the questions. Un- Right. And they worry about unfiltered questions, too, because then you just get people, you know, putting like boob emojis or whatever on the screen. (laughs) I don't know about that. I think like I would love to have like tough questions asked that aren't the same. They're all you know, they're all part of this little group culture there in Washington, D.C. They all hang out together like it's no secret, you know, what these guys do. They they always play right to her talking points. It's not like she doesn't have talking points prepared before she goes in there. They don't ever ask anything that she doesn't know that's coming. She has a whole folder that she flips to. You know, when they're when she asks when someone asks that question. So when someone asks about, uh, you know, Cuba, she goes right to the C tab and she flips it over about Ukraine. She flips it over. So she went right to that the other day when she was asked specifically about Lindsey Graham's questions. She pulled up the Lindsey Graham tab and she had a pre-prepared thing ready to say it right in front of it. All right. So if that dream was a reality and CNN comes knocking, I'm going to say no. Yeah. Because they are self-righteous. Yeah. So. Full disclosure, I did want to work there in my 30s, but not anymore, Mr. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Chance. I'm going to act like the woman scorned. 